Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at an Ursic Scattervine list. So this is something that someone on Discord requested and I want to go ahead and put something together and try and figure out a sort of a way to make use of it. And what I've done here is to make it a little bit more sort of Scattervine focused. I've still kept with a couple of early units, so obviously we've gone for Maximus here for the early game pressure. We've got Zaxjakar here to help us sort of kill early units alongside Deadeye. So they're going to be our standard sort of early game plays just to you try and take out enemy units early on so then we can protect our scattervine from that point onwards so the plan for the game is basically going to be to try and just do that early on and then put all the focus on scattervine make as many as we can keep them separate so they don't all die at once and i've tried to limit how much damage is in the rest of the roster so we have to rely on scattervines to do so so to support our lovely scattervine so what scattervine does is for two cinder it just makes a copy of itself and it can act straight away so it's a one three slow charge and you can just make a whole swarm of them, but it does count towards your unit cap. So, to protect them, we've gone for Aegis Defense Dome, so reduce damage by one, which is perfect, absolutely useful. We haven't gone for any healing in this, because we, I mean, healing of three health units can be very rare they survive anyway. We've gone for Torian Guardian, so Torian's going to be able to just make one of them harder to hit. Uh, sometimes we can use it to protect our captain if we need to. And we've also got Necker Hall. So, the reason I've gone for Necker Hall is because, in theory, if we get ahead and we're slightly worried about losing our scattervines, we can bring one back to the bridge and just save it for another turn so we can start growing all over again. And for our last little bit of offensive capabilities here, we've got Drum Dancer Tlali, so this probably goes down on turn 3 alongside a scattervine if we can keep it safe, or somewhere else if we can't keep the scattervine safe, we just save that for the next turn. And we've got Give a Melee Unit Pummel for the turn, so that's going to really help with scattervine you getting that extra damage in. And also Amplify Bite, so even with the buff going up to 6 Cinder, it definitely helps us put down a little bit more of you know a little bit more pressure with our scattervines. So we're gonna jump into a few games and see what we can find out. If you enjoy these sort of videos, please do hit that subscribe button. With the new set coming up, I really want to try and push for you know, getting that 250 subs shortly after it comes out. And we've only got two weeks to go, just under two weeks, I believe, as well, until the end of the season pass. So I'm hoping not long after that we should be getting new units. We don't have a definite time, but really really keen for it so please do hit that subscribe button in the meantime after that i'll see you in game okay the queue's just popped for our first game it's quite a short queue so that's always good and hopefully we can uh, come across a good opponent and watch ourselves fall apart i recognize this i want to say this is uh, maybe bad as in the person bad but maybe not okay plink and corrosive seems good stasis field and lifelines reasonable I think we just want Plink. Plink and Corrosive good. Is this who I thought it was? Oh, it's Pax! Oh, okay. Hello, Pax. Get wrecked written on the bomb. GG easy. Can't see what the other one says, but Pax, that is a great looking paint job there. So, my normal positioning here is just going to be move forward to this point and place Maximus down somewhere that it can't be shot by Zax. So, it'll be about here. We can get fairly close to the corner without giving them line of sight, usually. As long as we just have that, it's the very centre of the base that it measures to, so I just want to try and keep that centre out of a clear line where they'd have range to, so this in theory should be pretty safe. Yeah. I think we're just about on the border of where it's safe, and now they're moving defensively to make up for that. And if they deploy something, I imagine they deploy here as well. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Just what we'd expect. I think here is the correct choice. I don't think there's going to be a good line of sight into it. If they deploy here, I will try and take a shot. Ooh, Antios. Interesting. So I will try and take a shot on Antios, but also... Ooh, we got both. So the question is... Where do we go? I think we still want to move forwards, but then this is dead to stim burst, so... Let's just go back. There's nothing here that's going to get a line of sight. So we might as well actually just... I do want to move forward, I want them to come out, but I'm going to move it this way because I want them to come in this direction. And then we're going to pop our Deadeye down here because Deadeye having more health means that's a little bit safer. Just and we're going to flink anti as well. Nice. Okay, so this is a good good start. We only need one hit on anti with anything to kill it, basically. So yeah, they're going to have to run away. Hopefully Pax will be able to see this video as well because I'm pretty sure they're already subscribed so they can see the uh, see the game back. It's always fun seeing it from a different angle. This can hit, it's fine, we knew this was an option. We're not as worried placing Deadeye out there because obviously Deadeye has more health and now Zax is exposed and that's kind of what we're hoping for at this point. 
Okay, we've got... I was about to say, if something coming down this early, there's a good chance it's something we can't deal with if it's going to be that, so to me that is almost always going to be a shrapnel. So what we want to do here is we want to make it as hard as possible for Zax to hit us, but while still allowing us to kill here. So what I think we actually want to do... I'm going to use corrosive here. I don't think we can even kill shrapnel. So I'm just going to use Corrosive for one damage here and use Plink over here because Plink is more guaranteed. Okay, we did get the damage, that's good. So we'll send... Uh, Maximus is going to come back around here, hide from Shrapnel. Zax is going to come over here and take the shot. We did get it. So the question is, do we just go for all-out pressure here? And honestly, with Shrapnel dealing two, it's not too far away from being the right choice, but... You know what? I think we do it because Antios isn't relevant right now. This makes it. Oh, we're not quite blocking Shrapnel in. That's awkward. So, if we want to block Shrapnel. Let's place things in two different sides of Shrapnel. And I'm just going to ping Plink here. And we're going to save the two Cinder because it doesn't actually make a difference in terms of when we use it now or later because we save it anyway. And Scattervine has charge. So. They're going to move over here, take these shots, and we're just going to basically either turn on the captain. That's a pretty good shot. I'm glad the crit was there, not here, so the crit didn't actually do anything. Yeah, so with them moving Antios in, if they move Antios in range, we're just going to try and kill it. Is this going to be... This feels like a vortex. Maybe they're going for the hit. I'm curious as to what it's going to be, because we don't know any of their assists yet. I do think this game's actually going to be quite difficult, because I don't think we can really kill shrapnel very, uh, very easily at all. Oh, it's lifeline. Okay. So we could try and go for that, or I think we just could also go for the captain. We can barely deal with anything to shrapnel here whatsoever. So this is where the change to corrosive really matters. Okay, that's Taria, so they can go for the rapid fire shrapnel. So I think here, we're just going to need to go for damage onto the captain. And that is absolutely what we're going to go for. So the question is, can we deploy close enough? We can. So we're just going to go all out for damage here. So then we can do is grow here. Hit this. We're going to grow the other side. Take a hit here. We're going to move back over here so Antios can kill this one. This one's going to be a little bit safer for Shrapnel. This one's already activated. We're going to use Zax to take this shot here. We're going to pick that up. Perfect. We've got a clean shot here. So we're going to take this. We did get both. And I think at this point, we do still want to be moving forwards. So we're going to use Talali to block this angle off from Antios. And we're going to use Maximus up here to try and be a little bit safer. We've got nothing left and we're just going to plink them down. Okay, so now, they're going to have a really time, really hard time killing our scatter vines, And we can make two more of the next turn. And with plink, this should be a really good option of finishing them off. They're just going to have to be fully on the defensive here. And they don't have enough damage to turn to the captain. Yeah. Rapid firing shrapnel's a good choice. But it's how you prevent the damage is the issue. And I think that's going to be very difficult for them here. Okay, that was exactly what we can hope for shrapnel. With two cinder here, they can kill this plant. With these two, they can kill that one, but we've still got one left. So, this is going to be... That's the wrong one to shoot. They could kill that with Antios. Is this a Ion Storm? Make it reducing accuracy would be good here. Vortex. Okay, I'm not as worried about Vortex. So again, we're in a reasonable spot here. We're only needing to get three damage onto their captain. So, essentially, we just need Zax to hit or one of these scatter vines to live. So that's obviously not going to be the case, which is optimistic. If they've got something that can block these in, that would be good. But we've got two attacks. We've got them based, essentially, they should be nearly down to one here. Okay, so that's Furia down. So we're just going to grow onto here. If we get a crit, we should win. So we'll just grow onto here. Again, moving different angles. 
Okay, and move back again. So we don't have much going on apart from just a few more options. Again, we're just doing this to spread these out. So if we can make this hit, then we win the game. We've got Plink if not. But there we go. Perfect. So that was the Scattervine win. I don't think we'd have actually got there in that situation without the Scattervines. Uh, so the, them playing the Shrapnel really did force us to turn onto them. So I know that's something Jess has mentioned previously about how playing a defensive unit can actually turn the opponent more aggressive. And that's exactly what it did here. So we had no other option. We couldn't really deal with the Shrapnel, especially not with this list. So we had to find another way of dealing with it. And we did. So that was a really good Scattervine game. We didn't get to use too many of the buffs, so but we just made really good use of Scattervine itself. And I think that was a, a really solid way of pulling up that win. In another game, I'd love to try and get one where we use Amplifier Bytol for the finish, but that you know, it depends on having things on the battlefield already. Ideally, you want to find a way to keep Bytol on the battlefield and then play your Scattervines next turn. But with Bytol being so squishy, it's a really big risk to do so. So, again, another great game. I will jump back when we get our second one, and I'll see you there. Okay, we've just queued up into our second game. We're going to see what our opponent's going to be. There's our beautiful monochrome Zax. I have finally switched it back from my festive Zax. It, I felt it was about time. I love my monochrome Zax anyway, so I couldn't resist doing it. Now, we can't really take Stowaway here, because that will absolutely just take away our Scattermine most of the time. <laughs> Syndrome Fusion Escape Hatch is not great, so I guess for a Stasis Field Medical Recall. Like, Medical Recall's not the worst. Oh, we get packs again. Awesome, it's actually been a while since the first game, so I thought we'd have a different opponent. But hello again, Pax, lovely to see you. So, we're just going to go for the aggression here. Because it's an Astra, I'm actually just going to place Maximus somewhere out of line of sight. And basically just hope they don't have Plink, and this way we can be just super aggressive early on. Because if they have Plink, this is bad for us, because it means they next turn they could potentially just kill it. But if they don't have Plink, there's not much that they can do to really keep safe if they place... Yeah, if they place anything even vaguely risky, we might even be able to steal the Cinder Orbs, which is exactly what we're going to do. So this just forces them to be really, really defensive with any Cinder Orbs they go for. Yeah, so they're actually going to go for the same shot back, and then probably just run away somewhere. Yeah, and if, like I said, if they go for a, a Cinder Orb anywhere, there's a very good chance that we can get on top of it. So this might be one of their best options in terms of keeping us away from it. But I actually think it matters whether we hit with Zax here, because maybe we could even just fit through that gap. So we can't quite get there. So this isn't going to be enough. So let's just try moving right the way up with Zax and seeing what happens. So obviously this is our best chance at getting onto it. Now, so we still can't fit through that gap. So the question is, does it give us a better angle and it gives us a worse one? I think there's got to be a way we can steal this here. It might even just involve using our Cinder to even just like move them out of the way. So essentially we get one extra Cinder. Can we deploy onto it? I don't know what we do here. I've got plans Let's just... Okay, you know what? Have a jam sesh? Let's do this. So we'll just move and steal it this way. Move back out to safety. And then we're actually just going to deploy Tlali in melee range here. And just try and keep the pressure on. I'm, I'm not sure that was correct. We've kept them off of additional Cinder, but they're going to have second wind anyway. But it's puts up with us with a lot of damage on the battlefield. And they can't really do anything impactful. Hugely impactful this turn, I should say. They can still play like a Beatrice. If they have a Plink, they could do Plink. Haste to Beatrice out would be fine for them. And that would actually be pretty brutal for us. But we'd just still be turning on to the enemy captain here. If they haste to... No, don't place it here. Don't do it. No, OP. Poor Pax. If they'd placed it here, this would have been really good for them. So now we can actually just move over. Take our couple of shots. We did get one. Beatrice can only move to there, so we're going to move here on the assumption they don't have Stim Burst. Uh, here, I think we just go for the hit again. We're just going to keep applying pressure. We're going to save our Scattervine for next turn here, so I actually think we're just going to place a Dead Eye. Where do we want to place? I mean, 
how far can they move up here? So I actually think we're safe placing Deadeye down over here somewhere. Can't get in range of Beatrice. We keep everything fairly safe. You said it. We could even just sleep a mine that, but we don't know what their assists are yet, so we're not going to. And now we've really just turned all the pressure onto Pax immediately. Going to make it very hard for them to get out of this. We've got potentially what, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 damage on the battlefield already. And they're at 11, so given that we've got a stun next turn, yeah, if this is still in range, we're in a really good spot. So Beatrice can move somewhere, yep, straight onto us, so now we're not in range. But we can still just, again, put damage on, and we can also stun, Be uh, stun Astra next turn, so we know there's no haste coming. And here we can maybe just eke out enough damage over two turns to end the game, which I think is going to have to be our plan. We're probably even just returning to Lali here and just placing it down. Yeah, if we could get in range here, this would be a huge difference. Service. So let's just take the shots we can. Move Time back out. Just take every opportunity we've got. Just look like you're thinking. Okay, we got that. Yeah, so we still can't really get anywhere with this, so we might as well just move away with Tali. Force him to do... Actually, that was a terrible move. We're going to have to recall that. So we're going to status field here, and because this is a scattervine list, we're going to poke them with some scattervines. And run, uh, grow first, run away, hit, and then hide over here I think, and just move this out of the way so we don't have any issues on that front. And because they're stunned, we'll place a sleeper mine down. Turns out sleeper mines, uh, because we can just move straight back in, we'll do this. If you place a sleeper mine down and they can't move, they're going to take two damage anyway, so... Lifeline is good. I don't think it's enough. That's only eight life they're going to go to, so without something else to heal it, we're going to have a lot of damage coming through. We've got two here. However many we can get in ahead with these. Defense time. Okay, that might do it. Because that means we need to deal eight two damage hits, and we don't have enough to play uh, Bytol next turn. So I actually think we have to go and either try and kill this, or try and pull it out of range using Grav Disc. Which is a very interesting place to be. So I'm going to move and try and pull it first, but I don't think we're going to be able to do so. I think we're going to have to actually go for the uh, the damage in this front. Like Beatrice is going to take nothing from the mine. So maybe for a whole turn we have to just turn our focus here. Need a moment so. to take all this in. We can get it like this distance which again so looking at it like this I'm going to change this angle just to sort of see yeah I don't think we're going to get it out of range I think we have to try and kill it because so it would be a waste of cinder if we did that right now so we're just going to I think that's a really good play there really good choice uh, here's still relatively safe we we'll just shoot this Bring Dead Iron over here, shoot here again. And again, we could we can make two plants and just kill it. Which I think might even just be the right choice here. Yeah, let's just we're here for plants. So let's pop it over here. And that gives us no good angles here, but we can move in this direction, make it... What we want to do is basically make it so that Astra doesn't have many base areas big enough the size of her base to move into. So we're just going to keep spreading out. Astra can move a couple of spots. I'm going to place it here. So now Astra's only spot to move is in this little area or over here. So this mine isn't a good mine normally, but it's not touching any of our units, and it's surrounded them really, really solidly. And if they hit something that wasn't uh, dead eye, so if they hit like a, a scattervine, we could actually sacrifice a scattervine to Beatrice in order to actually take a unit out and go play Bytol next turn. So again, feeling good spot. We've got a lot of pressure on the board. We haven't taken any damage to our captain. We need, like, we actually would be fine if they kill something here, which is strange. They've, They've not been using Into the Breach, so one of their only outs here, I think, is if they could fit a Rickety in here, maybe. So that's not Rickety, it's Stitchy. Okay, Stitchy can heal. Yeah, this works. 
Funnily enough, it might actually be correct to lose Deadeye here in order to make everything else attack better. I think that's what I'm going to do. Because what I can also do is I can move Deadeye here, attack here, get Beatrice to attack back, and hit their captain. Eyes open, tails which behaving. is very entertaining, but also probably the right choice. Because it does the same amount of damage anyway. We lose Beatrice. We can play Amplifier Bytel down now. Uh, probably here so we don't lose too many attack angles. And... Okay, let's just... Move in and get attacked first. I'm the Cinder Whisperer. Push your damage here. And get the Scatterline finish. There we go. That was what we wanted to do, is find a good turn for Amplified Vital. We didn't have much in terms of Cinder left, but again, applied loads of pressure to the captain. We were able to finish them off with a load of little squiggly plants. And we get exacts closer and closer to that extra rarity, which is awesome. So... Hopefully we're going to jump back into one more game, get another recorded, and have a bit of fun with this. And I'll see you once we get back in the game again. Okay, we're in for round three. Final game of the video. I'm not quite sure what we're going to come up against. Maybe it'll be PAX again. Let's see what we come across. That will be us. And if this is an Astra, I'm going to guess it's PAX. Oh, it's still your now. So this could be PAX for a third time with a third different captain, which would be quite an entertaining video at least. Um, for our Scattervines, what do we think? I think Stimburst and Lifeline is good. Stimburst is great. I love Stimburst. It's probably my favourite assist at the moment. Maybe Plink, but those two are really on par with me, especially when I'm playing Exterior. Stimburst just feels unfair. It is. So we've actually got a trio of PAX games with a trio of captains. That's a really funny you know, set of uh, set of content there. A bit of variety going on. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, Drum Dancer Tlali coming down. No good angles here, so I think we just probably just protect ourselves. Move into this. And pop our little Maximus down. In fact, given that they can't move that far anyway, but we're still gonna, just going to... Let's place Maximus about here. So this doesn't die, I think, to a Stimburst. We should be... Actually, maybe this is in Stimburst range. If they've got Stimburst they'd, and they're willing to spend two Cinder, they can just kill Maximus here. I think they'd be in range. Or Vortex, or yeah, Vortex doesn't happen yet anymore, actually, come to think of it. So that's probably not the case. Now, the fun thing with this. Oh, is this Beatrice? Oh, we did we put ourselves. No, we didn't. Okay, good. I was going to say, I thought I'm used to not putting myself against the walls anymore, but. So, how do we work this turn? I'm going to stim burst no matter what. What I'd really like to be able to do is get a good line of sight with oh, Zax over there. So, I'm going to start by just taking like a 100% shot over here. 98. I should have gone a little bit closer. And then just figure something out in a moment. Yeah, we so we can get really close in here, which is perfect. And then what we can do is play the namesake of this list, our little Scattervine. Play that and move away. Probably away from Beatrice's angle here. We don't. Uh, I'm actually genuinely worried we might not be out of spin range, so I'm just going to grow another one in this direction. And maybe just move. If they want to spin to kill one of them, that's fine by me. And then we'll just move Maximus, I think, back here. Just get a bit safer. Maybe further away from Beatrice. There we go. So now we really are swarming already. Yeah, this is perfect. We've kept our distance at every angle. I think this is, yes, yeah, so they can move over here and spend two cinder just to kill one plant, which is obviously not what you want to be doing at this point. Like, if they do that, we just move around and start poking them again. Because they, they want to be deploying units here rather than trying to kill our units. Like, they need, it's more important for them to deploy something. So, something over here. This, this could be a jailbreak. This feels like it could be a jailbreak. Oh, it's a crankbait. Interesting. Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> oh, Pax. I mean, your Beatrice does love hitting your own captain, apparently. So, let's just go for damage here. So, we shoot this. Move back a little. 
I'm honestly tempted to just keep on applying damage in different ways. So, you know what actually we can do here? Because we've only got two Cinder and I'm not sure what I want to do with it. If I place this mine just about here, this should block Extilio in fully. Yep. Whoops. We can just keep moving as a, wherever we want, really. We can't really get away from Beatrice, so let's just move in this direction. We've got one more spare plant already, so I'm just going to take damage here. Hopefully no crit. Okay, we didn't get crit, so meaning they have to spin or do something. And then this one can just move down here. Grow another plant over here. Hope for another live. Perfect. And just move about here. Keep them in place. Excellent. So we've now trapped them into a corner. Their exilior can spin, they can deal with things, but they can't kill everything. Okay, they're just going for us. So that's a uh, time for us to turn on the heat a little bit, I think. Ooh, that crit is actually a big deal. So, we do have Amplify by Tell coming down if we want it. Crankbait can just kill this one, that's fine. I feel like as long as we get good use out of the vines eventually, it's not as big of a deal. This I don't agree with. This I think is possibly a waste. I don't think Stimburst gets us quite in range either, but we're just going to probably go for Bytol and just start hitting things a bit. So here we've got 7 damage coming next turn. So this is 5 and 2, plus 1 to 8. So we, we're still alright for now. They're scattervining us! That's not cool. I feel betrayed. Pax, how could you? So because they don't have any other activations though, we might still be able to get good use out of this. Especially if we can just get these two. Yeah. Is this still 76%? Okay. So this is going to be an amplified Bytol turn and just try and push damage in, I think. That was Bytol, wasn't it? Yeah. So we're just going to go for this. There we go, we made it there. I forgot my lucky cravat. Push these. Perfect. Uh, not many good places to hide for them. But I am going to come over. I'm going to come over here. And then this can just move over here. Again, this is just move blocking at this point. This moon's talking to me. Keep Zax as far away as we can get. This makes it... Actually, they can just probably get to everything they need to over here. Maybe I should have moved this way. It meant they had to decide between Vital and Zax. So we could actually be losing this, potentially. But we have got a lot of damage here. So they can deal damage here and kill Vital. Yep. That's what they want to be doing. Nano Shield. Nice. Okay, so now the thing with Nano Shield is it just makes us play the runaway game for one turn. If they kill our vine is actually the worst thing for us here, because that's what we're just going to rely on for the rest of this game, I think. We're going to make two vines next turn and play Drum Dance and Slurly. Other than that, we're just going to place our own mine. Actually, no, we're going to not play a Slurly, we're going to play a mine here. Ooh, they're going for us. Look alive, stay alive. Okay, so we can, we're going to have to spend more Cinder just getting out of this situation, basically, because we've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, 11 damage here, so there's actually quite a bit that they can do. Is this recall? Sure. That doesn't bother us at all, I don't think. So the question is, where's our safest route? Just look like you're thinking. I think it's actually just to grab disc this up here. Get acquainted. We'll move along this way. Place a sleeper mine about here, so they have to move first to get to it. Think fast. Um, at this point, we might as well just poke crankbait here. Ooh, got a crit. Uh, we're just going to move far away, basically, I think. And honestly, I do think it's probably... I mean, it's probably right to play... Uh, Dead Eye out, but we're not here to play Dead Eye. Can't 
Uh, technically, we have a range attack. Might as well use it. Um, that's where we want it. I'm going to try and avoid lifelining so that I can lifeline our Zax if we need to. I think we're in a good spot here. Yeah, so they have to move here to kill it and spin, which and that means they can't attack as well. So that's why we placed it just outside of spin range to force the movement into the direction we wanted. So, Who designed this outfit? Uh, actually, we've left this too close. We should have played this out of Beatrice's range. I thought I was, I thought I had that down to be honest. Okay, so they're just going to go for the hit on Maximus. That's fine. Yeah, actually, these two should be definitely further apart because they could also extilio spin it, and that kind of defeats the object of trying to win with. <laughs> With things like that. Okay, that's good for us. It's going to make it a lot harder for them to have the damage they need. Yep. Ooh, crit. So it doesn't prevent things over here from happening. So what damage have we got here? So they've essentially got one health if we play this correctly. Which, can we get into range here? I think we can. So we've got one uh, from that, and then we've got three, four extra vines in theory. But we don't have enough units for that. Interesting. Stimburst. Okay, yeah, I'm not worried about their vines. Okay, Stimburst, I think, actually has to go over here. Although, actually, can Maximus get in like line of sight? No. And Maximus getting in line of sight is more important than one of our vines getting it. In fact, this is even better. So. Max is going to be the one to pop off that re re uh, prevent damage shield. Okay. Oh, hang on, I'm trapped. Oops, I thought I had more movement than that. Uh, 75%, that's not too bad, so. Okay, we got that, so now we should just have the game. So we take this hit. Uh, we need to then grow into here. Take this hit. Then we can grow into here just in case. I don't know what in case of. And get the win again. Scattermine! Brilliant. Three for three Scattermines against the same opponent each time with a different captain. That's actually quite entertaining. And uh, so, gone ahead, made ourselves a new Scattermine video. I think it was uh, someone called Phone Guy that. Rec uh, that requested this in the t Discord, and I'm absolutely up for video recommendations. If you've got any, please send them my way. I love playing Scatterwind, it's always very entertaining, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed it too. If you have, please drop a comment, let me know what you think, how you play it differently. If you've got any specific things you want to like, let me know, please, please do so. Drop a like on the video, please subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, have a good day.